Hi, I'm Paul Sanger from the Finance News Network, and today we're interviewing Tim Humphreys, who is the Portfolio Manager of Osborne's Global Essential Infrastructure Fund. Tim, welcome to the network. Thanks very much, Paul. Great to be here. Tim, your fund looks at global infrastructure opportunities. Where did the current constituents of your fund mainly come from geographically, and why? Yeah, the fund is um, 25 to 45 stocks, currently around about 30 stocks. Uh, of essential infrastructure companies. So we have a universe of about 108 companies from from all over the world, but primarily focused on the developed markets. We look at uh, companies such as utilities, such as pipelines, toll roads, airports, uh, because these are the companies that we think best deliver the characteristics of infrastructure that people expect. So things such as downside protection, inflation protection, low correlations to other asset classes, bringing in diversification benefits. So these are the characteristics that we're trying to deliver. And in terms of the geographic split, primarily in the developed markets, uh, so about half of the portfolio is in North America, then about another 40% is, is in uh, Western Europe and, and the UK, and then 10 is, is based in Australia. And we like to focus on the developed markets because we think that reduces risk. Obviously, there's a lot of opportunity in the emerging markets, but that can also introduce additional risk, such as regulatory risk, political risk, and currency risk. So for us, the primary focus is on the developed markets. And uh, what mix of listed and unlisted assets does the fund currently have? And again, why is that? Yeah, we're, we're fully listed. So 100% of the portfolio is invested into to listed infrastructure companies. And it's important to uh, to understand that a lot of the the assets of infrastructure are are held both by listed companies and also unlisted uh, pension funds and superannuation funds as well. So the M7 toll road, for example, is part owned by Transurban and part owned by some of the superannuation funds. So very often the assets are very similar on the listed and the unlisted side. But the benefits of, of being listed are, first of all, liquidity. So we can get in and out of a company in a day. If something changes, we can sell our shares in a day. And that's a really good risk reduction tool that we we have. We also think that diversification is an important factor and the listed market allows you to have a very well diversified portfolio. The listed market also typically has lower debt levels than the unlisted uh, funds have as well. And we think that again is a good uh, risk mitigator. So we think there are a lot of benefits to, to being in a listed portfolio that uh, benefit our, our, our shareholders. And Tim, what screening process criteria do you apply to potential constituents? Yeah, our, our process is, is all about screening. There's only currently about 108 companies worldwide that, that fit our definition of essential infrastructure. So we're always, lo- always looking to, to screen out companies because that means that the pool we're left with really does express and distill down those characteristics we think investors want. So we look at things like an ESG screen, so uh, ex- excluding out controversial activities and things like uh, companies that have too much thermal coal. We're also looking at balance sheets, excluding companies that, that have too much debt, in our opinion. Also companies that, that are too small and don't have sufficient liquidity. So when we look at the pool that we're left with of those 108 companies, just focus on essential infrastructure, that really does mean that we're defining the boundaries of essential infrastructure. We're creating the right pool to fish in to create the portfolio from. And it also means that those, those uh, companies we know extremely well. So we just spend all of our time focusing on those 108 companies to give ourselves an information advantage over the rest of the market. And we think that's a really good opportunity to deliver performance. Tim, the fund runs a high conviction and concentrated portfolio. How volatile are the returns been to date? Yeah, it's, it's interesting. Over the last uh, few years, clearly we, we, we've had COVID uh, come through and that increased volatility uh, significantly. You know, we saw uh, some of the, uh, the share prices fall uh, significantly during the, the, the COVID crash in March 2020. But importantly for us, the underlying cash flows that these companies deliver uh, has been very stable and it's been in fact growing since COVID. So when we see the cash flow stable or growing for the underlying companies, but the share prices fall materially, that for us is a really good opportunity to use that volatility and to, to reallocate the portfolio. So a really good example of this was Sydney Airport. Back in uh, 2020, share price fell by half because of COVID and there was no traffic going through the airport. But our long-term valuation only moved down by about 10%. So when we saw the share price down 50%, our valuation down 10%, 
we jumped on that opportunity and made a really good return for, for our investors because ultimately Sydney Airport was acquired by the, uh, the superannuation fund. So a really good example of how we can use that volatility to generate value. And uh, given the current state of the economy, both globally and locally, how does rising inflation and the rising interest rate environment impact the fund and the investing criteria? Well, inflation is very good for, for essential infrastructure because lots of companies have effective mechanisms through which they can pass on inflation. And for us and our portfolio, around about 97% of the portfolio has an effective means to pass through inflation. So it might be a toll road, for example, that is allowed to increase tolls at the previous year's inflation in that country, or it might be utilities whereby they're allowed to increase their bills to the customers in line with inflation the previous year in that country. So very explicit and highly implicit ways through which inflation can be passed through. And this will turn up in the revenue lines of the companies over the next couple of years. But in terms of interest rates, uh, we see the main impact being on, on the valuation. These are very long-term assets and rising interest rates can reduce the, the valuations for, for long-term assets. So at the moment, we're in a situation where the, the rising interest rates has, has hit share prices, the company's share prices have suffered, but the long-term prospects, because of the lagged infect, effective in inflation, have not yet fed through. We see that as a really good opportunity for the fund at the moment. What specific types of infrastructure do you see providing the greatest opportunity in the short and medium term? Well, at, at the moment, uh, AI is, is obviously the, the, the hot topic, but we think close behind that is the, the energy transition, you know, the switching of coal, particularly generation for, for renewable, uh, but also the associated investment that needs to be done on the electricity transmission grids. So just over about 50% of the portfolio is currently uh, facing the, the energy transition through renewable energy companies, through electricity transition grids and through utilities, particularly in, in North America, that are closing down their coal generation and also replacing it with with uh, renewable energy generation. So the energy transition is, is a medium to, to longer term opportunity. In the short term, we're seeing really good opportunities in the transportation sector, so toll roads and airports, whereby the traffic is now up to, to pre-COVID levels, so back to where it was, but the share prices are significantly lower than they were in 2019. So still a really good opportunity there. And then also in some of the longer dated assets, such as the mobile phone towers, we think there's a really good opportunity there because these are companies where the share prices have been hit by the rising interest rates, uh, the longer dated nature. But looking at the fundamental value and the cash flow that these companies are going to generate, we think there's a really good opportunity in the mobile phone tower space as well. And uh, what investment time horizon does the fund generally sort of target? Well, infrastructure should be seen as a long-term asset class. You know, the assets are very long-term in their nature. The, the cash flow is very secure over the long term. So we think a minimum of five years should be viewed as a holding period for, for infrastructure. But, but really, it should be held for for many years. But five years should be seen as the, the minimum holding period in our view. And to finish up, what sort of pipeline in terms of opportunities can we see coming over the next year or two? Yeah, it's... Um, Infrastructure as an asset class is, is, is really growing. You know, it's very well known in, in Australia, but the infrastructure story is just sort of getting out to, uh, to, to people in North America and Europe. So it's a really exciting uh, pathway for the asset class going forward. And when we look at essential infrastructure, uh, we believe that essential infrastructure is the fastest growing part of infrastructure. So for us, it's really exciting because companies are, are selling off some non-infrastructure assets moving into our universe. We're also seeing companies demerge or list assets into to new companies. So overall, our universe of companies is, is, is growing. And that's sort of at odds with what the view here is in Australia, because over the past few years, we've seen a lot of the infrastructure companies uh, be acquired by uh, the, the superannuation fund. So whilst the, uh, the universe is, is, is reduced in Australia, it's growing overseas. And that gives investors, in our view, a really good opportunity to, to get into the infrastructure theme and benefit from those infrastructure characteristics, downside protection, inflation protection, good dividend yield, and also diversification benefits, because infrastructure as a theme is only going to grow over the next five or 10 years. And we think infrastructure, and listed infrastructure in particular, will become a standalone allocation to, to a lot of investors' portfolios. Tim Humphreys, many thanks for your time. Absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.